Welcome back to the morning show here on the Rise News. I'm Rafael Yaseni. And I'm Shaito Atigari. Good morning. Another How are you pleasure. doing today? Friday. <laughs> Friday. All right. We'll begin in the UK. Uh, where the United Kingdom, uh, United Kingdom Court has granted the federal government leave to appeal against the award and enforcement of the judgment that acts the Process and Industrial Development Limited to seize $9.6 billion in Nigerian assets. The Nigerian government has called for a probe of Justice Christopher Butcher of the London Commercial Court hearing the dispute between Nigeria and an Irish-owned firm registered in the British Virgin Island Process and Industrial Development PNID over a failed gas project that went into arbitration with $9.6 billion claim against the country. Uh, well, sir, the acting chairman of Economic and Financial Crisis Commission, the FCC, Mr. Ibrahim Magu, who is part of the Nigerian delegation to the court session yesterday, said in an interview in London that the court was so desperate to enforce the arbitral award. Two other members of the delegation, Minister of Information and Culture, Elijah Lai Mohammed, and Central Banker of Nigeria, Governor, uh, Mr. Godwin Ilemefele, also spoke with Arise News, reiterated the federal government's uh, allegation that the Gas Supply and Processing Agreement, GSAPPA, uh, between PNID and the Ministry of Petroleum was aimed at defrauding Nigeria. Nigeria is a country. Magu expressed loss of confidence in the British Commercial Court, said Nigeria would take the matter up at a diplomatic level. Joining us now to discuss this recent development and to also help us understand the application for stay of execution, which is currently being considered, is Mrs. Shola Oshodi John, the Registrar and Chief Executive Officer of Nigerian Institute of Chartered Arbitrators. Good morning, Ma. Good morning. Now, I think the first thing I want to ask you now, the Attorney General of the Federation, Mr. Abubakar Kamalami, has described this development as a positive one, as, a, as one in the right direction. What is your immediate reaction to the, to the forecast of, you know, uh, the forfeiture of Nigeria's assets? Are we, are we clear yet? Can we start celebrating? Well, uh, uh, for me, my opinion, I think um, we're going, we going through this matter the wrong way. Uh, the That's truth so. is that if you look at what happened yesterday, we're already 450 million pounds down. That's almost half a billion dollars. How? You have a 200 million pounds you have to pay into court, and you have a 250 legal fees for PNID. For what? At first, for what is that money paid into court? The to, be, to, to ensure that Nigerian government would go the old way. It's almost, it's almost like a caution fee, if I may put it like that. So, you if, know, so because right now, the matter actually has been concluded. It's just like Nigeria trying to reopen what has already been done, a done deal. So they need some form of financial security to show good faith that we will actually go through this matter. So the money is paid to a British court. That yes. money goes to the British coffers. Yes. So we're dashing the UK, Brexit UK, free $200 million. Well, probably if you go through the, if you go through the matter to the end, maybe the problem may refund you. But I really don't know how this is going to work out. This is going to work out and what interest is going to serve for Nigerians. Uh, in my opinion, I think what we should really be doing at this point is entering into a negotiated settlement. Because ultimately, if you look at where we started prosecuting this matter to today, you will find, I can assure you that we have spent over $1 billion or close to $2 billion. Okay. So in legal said, fees so and in, in, you know, hotel bills, yeah. whatever so, you can so, think so of. So you said, I mean, let's, let's look at this straight up. 200 million. It almost looks like uh, a, a wager it, of some it, sort. A deposit. Yes. yes. Another 250 million now for what? Legal fees. For legal P &ID, fees. Yes. For PNID. So yes. we are paying PNID's legal fees. You are the one taking them back to court. So the matter we're paying is already PNID's legal done fees. Deal. Minus our legal fees. Yes. And your legal fees is in pounds because I, if I, if I'm correct, the lawyers representing Nigeria are, are from the UK. They're not Nigerians. That's right. And for me, I don't, I don't think that was the right move. I don't think that was the right move. So the lawyers representing Nigeria and the UK, plus we have a lot of people have started to complain that why do we have the Inspector General of Police? Why do we have exactly, uh, exactly. AFCC? Exactly. What's the Minister of Information going exactly. to do there? What's the Central Bank Governor going to do there? You what people? Are, people uh, I, I'm telling you, you case. remember the last time I was here, I talked about the engaging professionals. Because, you know, we keep making the same mistake over and over again in this country. Until we begin to do the right thing, 
we will find ourselves always in this mess. We don't need this fire brigade approach, starting with the recent criminal uh, case that came up against P and ID in two days. That was a record-breaking judgment. And they were convicted in two, days. in two days. When did they gather the evidence? When did they? I mean, come on. Let's not keep doing things that well, make of, the old of, world to people, look at us as if we don't know what we are doing, as if we're an irresponsible country. A lot of people said, but that was the basis for them to now go to the UK. Was to that? Okay, now I'm going to ask you a question. If you really follow the proceedings or you had information, was that ever mentioned yesterday? No. So what was the purpose? I, I, I think that we need to call a spade a spade. And what we ought to do at this point is... Listen, let's cut our losses. This matter is already messed up from the very beginning. At this point, we should call P&ID and negotiate. And let them know, you know what? We know this is a sham, but because this is where we are, this is what we are willing to give you. Cut our losses, because now we are already $553 million down on this matter. That does not include the legal fees of the lawyers that we're engaged by Nigeria. Favorable. Everything out of our economy. Hmm. How do we handle this? Because ultimately, we are still going to have to pay P and ID something. We're not going to come out of this thing clean. No matter whatever defense we come up with, we are still not going to come out clean. I, want to jump in here. I, mean, I, want, I want to bring it back home now. We're looking at the court case in Nigeria where we saw some of the P and, P and ID uh, representatives from Nigeria that were charged and they were found guilty. But PNID has come out and said, you know what, these people don't even work for us. How do we, how do we make sense of that? It's, it just, it looks like we are just going back and forth. How do we make sense of that? It's really sad. It's really sad. Everywhere, all over the world, people are trying to ensure that the rule of law is at the highest level. When we do things like this, we, we, we ridicule the judiciary and our law officers the more. Because seriously, in my entire life, I have never heard of where a court in Nigeria would arrange somebody and in two days arrive at a decision. Have you heard? How will somebody that is outside this jurisdiction look at us when they, they go back our history, go back down the line and look at how we do handle things in Nigeria? Of course, they'll begin to say there's something fishy somewhere, something went wrong somewhere. So, you, what, you know, what are you saying invariably? Do you, you think those people that were arraigned as representative of PNID was all a, an arrangement? I don't really know. But you know, we're Nigerians. Let's ask ourselves are they really staff of PNID? Because PNID has come out to say no. So, I will keep saying that we need to go back to the drawing board. This is a is already a bad case. At this point, what we need is to look for a way forward. This P and ID matter is not going to disappear overnight. No matter what we do, no matter the grandstanding that we get into, we just make a ridicule of ourselves before the international community. I mean, the last amount. I mean, when the negotiations started, uh, I think during the regime. Started at six point six billion, and it's no, even before no, that, it was, it was, it was, seven, was, it was, it was seven hundred million. Okay. You know, seven hundred and fifty to seven eight hundred million. When you remove what we are going to spend in legal costs now, no. from what <laughs> we'll have paid then, I mean, the British here, penny wise, pounds foolish. That's where we are. Not because because if we are just paying the eight hundred million naira then. Legal costs now were 553 million naira down the line. On the you minus, have not added all the others. All the you other know? costs. We've not added cost of travel. We've not added cost what about of before we got media. here. Media. We have We've gone. We've not added cost of PR. Just hold on. Before we even got to this point, there had been several sittings from arbitration to the traditional conventional courts. All of that, Nigeria has lost in terms of legal fees. Estaco for officials. We keep doing the same thing. I don't know what we're going to learn. And really, I just pray that the Honorable Attorney General for the Federation is really listening to Nigerians and also talking to professionals that have the requisite skills and expertise to handle things like this.
Because if, we, if it does, Nigeria will come out better. And we should stop chasing shadows and deal with the substance. And I will suggest that PNID is just one of the numerous cases, arbitration, arbitration awards, against Nigeria. So until we go back and do the right thing, set up a think tank of experts and technocrats, review all the arbitration awards against Nigeria, the ones that we can settle, let's settle them. The ones that we can object to, let's object to them. If I recall, I think early this year, there was an award in favor of Nigeria of over a billion dollars that was won for Nigeria. Something similar like this. Some oil company said it was supposed to lift oil, and it lifted more than it was supposed to, and turned around and filed an arbitration matter against Nigeria. And Nigeria mobilized Nigerian arbitrators. I believe Professor Fabian Ajogo was one of the council. And they went into the matter, put the, uh, their skills and experts together, and they won an award for the federal government of over one point something billion dollars. Why can't the federal government Nigeria call these sort of experts, these arbitrators and lawyers, and say, listen, this is where we are. But, but, but the attorney general is there, isn't it an expert, or can't he muscle the... You see, in law, flashing? law law has, to do with, uh, law is, it has to do with a lot of areas. You cannot be a jack of all trades. There, 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 there is a time when you begin to talk about expertise and specialization. This is a specialized field. It is not a field where somebody that is probably into criminal law or a solicitor can handle. You have to deal, call the right people that understand what is going on and get them to negotiate. And that is why I talked about setting up a committee of experts. What we saw yesterday for me, I'm sorry to say, is almost like a jamboree again. Minister of Information, what is it doing? What is it doing? What does it know about what was going on? CBN governor, EFCC, IG. Is there any case of criminality in it? Why, why is the IG in London? I don't can know. You, can you tell That's why I'm, I'm wondering. Is there any arrest to be made? I am wondering. So I, I really think that we need to get our hearts together. Let's stop making it ridicule of this country, honestly. And the only way we can do that is we need to engage the private sector, engage the professional body. Nigeria is our country. We have no other country to go. Okay. Why are we in this mess? Mm. I think we're in this mess because typical Nigeria, we don't like doing the right things. We know what to do, but we do not do it. Because ultimately it comes down to self-interest. Until we begin to put on our nationality, our patriotism, God, then Nigeria will be a better place. And the starting point is there needs to be synergy between the public sector and the private sector. Because if you look at all the people, all the officers that went represent of Nigeria yesterday, I didn't see the private sector there. I didn't see people coming from the private sector or the professional sessions there. And I had said earlier, I hope that the Honorable Attorney General and everyone that is in this government is listening. We cannot do anything about this matter and all the matters like this if we refuse to engage the right persons and the right organizations. So I am appealing to the Federal Ministry of Justice, to the Central Bank, EFCC, everybody that is in government, the president to say, please, we have the requisite skills in Nigeria. Let's stop throwing out our monies. Let's stop this capital flight that is ongoing now all through this P and ID matter and other matters like this. This is not the first time. Things like this had come up so many years ago. And we found a strong way some Nigerians, you know, became rich all of a sudden from being middlemen mm. trying to negotiate and settle things like this on behalf of Nigeria. It needs to stop. So I am appealing that they need to now come back home Engage, I don't know what they're going to do, because they've already, they've already engaged foreign lawyers to handle this matter. I don't see how this should have happened. Because I know of a, of a truth that we have Nigerians qualified that do operate, they practice in both jurisdictions, that 
the Honorable Antonio General of the federal government could have, you know, sought their services. I mean, there are even Nigerians that are Queen's Council. To are handle it. Across board. So is, like, it that we, it, so, so is it that we don't believe in our own? Or we think they cannot do a good job? The only person that can really, you know, watch out for us and be very patriotic about issues like this are Nigerians and no other. So I, I, I feel that this recent move to some level was the wrong move. So, yes, they've engaged them, they've, you know, mobilized them, but I think they also need to get Nigerians on board. Okay. Chartered Institute of Arbitrators. Nigerian Institute Niger of Arbitrators. Niger Nigerian Institute of Arbitrators. We, we've been talking about this for quite some time now. Have, have they never called, you know, for once and say, okay, when can your members bring in their expertise and we all sit, sit down and talk about this? We'll get some we are still waiting. We've written, the the we've government written government to the Federal Ministry of Justice. We've written to uh, a few key officers that we know. And we believe that very soon they will definitely get, get back to reach out to us. Because I, I, I think that what we need to do is not only about PID. I, like I said last time, we need to sit and come together and pull up all the awards against Nigeria, all the bilateral treaties we've signed, investments, contracts, whatever it is that Nigeria is engaging. We need to put them together, review them. And the ones that we know it is not in our interest, if we can come out, we come out of them and say, we don't want to do this anymore. But if we cannot, we have to go back and say, we want to renegotiate. Until we do that, come up with, if I ask a question now, does, does anybody in Nigeria know all the treaties, conventions, and contracts, agreements that we have signed? I can assure you nobody has the information. So we need to start from there. But you, you sure the government doesn't have the information? You sure they don't have it in your record book? The, what the government will have will be piecemeal. It won't be a comprehensive information. So we don't have, you're saying we don't have a comprehensive database of every agreement entered into by the government? No, well, you shouldn't ask me that question. You're in Nigeria. I'm a Nigerian. <laughs> So we know what is obtainable. We know where our strength lies. But it's not too late to start that. Until, you, know, you know, the thing about it is that they say Rome was not built in a day. The most important thing for us is to agree that we have a problem and look for ways to resolve it. You're a Nigerian, I'm a Nigerian. But a Nigerian professor, Professor Jogu, like you said, yes. did, you know, win this on behalf. So there's still a lot of good things coming out of Nigeria. Of course, but if we don't engage Nigerians, to do this for us, you're not going to know. You're not going to know the extent to which we can. What's the MBA saying about this? Nigerian Bar Association. I mean, the MBA had this conference the other day, and I didn't hear robust conversation. The PNID was really on then. I didn't yes. hear robust conversations on that. It was the issue of a nugget. I mean, that's another kettle of fish they were talking about, basically. But what is the MBA saying about this? Well, I am a member of the MBA as well, and. Um, some of us are saying that there's a need. There's a need for an overhaul of the Nigerian Bar Association. It's very important because the Nigerian Bar Association is supposed to be a watchdog. It's supposed to be a voice for the bar and the bench to ensure that things are done rightly. They're supposed to be involved in advocacy, involved in policy making that has to do with law. And some of these are not, are not, we're not doing it. So I just hope that with the new leadership that is going to come on board, we'll begin to talk about things like this and move away from the modern things that we are involved in now. It's sad to say that today a lot of lawyers are no longer even interested in it. And that is why some don't even go for the, the, the annual conference and things like that because some people feel that it's now becoming a jamboree. And that is not what it's supposed to be. I mean, this, this just brings up a lot of conversation. So going forward, you said we're not doing it right. How can we approach this? You said negotiation. negotiation. We, sh we shouldn't negotiate. Putting Nigerians on board. Putting Nigerians on board. And also how? starting a, 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 a database, having yeah. a comprehensive database. So, so how do we negotiate? I mean, what do we tell PMI? Before we start... What is a possible range we can get off that? You know, before we even talk about... You see, like, I need you to understand that P&ID is not the, 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 the only or the most challenge that Nigeria has. So okay. more are still going to come. So, of course... So, 
we need to get it right from the beginning. And to get it right from the beginning has to do with, we must have that mind. We must be ready. Naming and shaping. Everyone that is involved in this matter, from the top to the bottom, must be brought to book. Not only in P&ID, &ID, but even other matters like this. If either they're dead or alive, the ones that are dead, their properties should be confiscated and sold off to pay this, this award against Nigeria. Until we begin to take drastic steps like an action, it's not going to change. Because you can put all the systems in place and everything seems to be working. As long as Nigerians refuse to allow it to work, it's not going to work. Because you still need men. You still need men to, you know, work with the system. Mm. So it's not as if we don't have a working system or the systems we have are not effective. But it's just that we have refused to do the right thing. So until we really start doing the right thing, naming and shaming, not only in PNID, but all the matters like this, ensuring that we put our best 11 forward, like I said the last time, holding people accountable, that's the only time we're going to come out of these woods. So it's not about just throwing in money. It's not about just uh, engaging a new set of lawyers. It's, it's not about that. So I, my candid opinion is that we need to call P and ID. I said, we know this is a fraud, it's a sham, but because we, we, we sat on our rights, we allowed this matter to get to this level. We could have nipped it in the board from the very beginning and actually even counterclaimed against Spear and ID. That was what happened in the one point something billion dollars matter that was handled by Professor Jogu and some other people. When Nigeria was sued, Nigerian government counterclaimed against them for the amount of oil that they have lifted and failed to disclose. And the close. product sharing deal. Yes, and they, they had to pay for it. So if we have done that from the very beginning, pay an ID right now, there will be nowhere. They will be finished. But we didn't do that. We allowed it to snowball into one big monster that is now almost consuming the whole of Nigerian government one year, you know, you know uh, uh, budget or resources or even our foreign reserve. So, so that's what we need to do. We need to now begin to think about engaging Nigeria. No, we should stop this. Not only in the legal profession, but even in the engineering profession and all other professions. Why do we take delight in engaging foreigners at our own expense? Yet we talk about capital flight. We talk about we want to, you know, keep the money in Nigeria. We want to ensure that our economy is, is buoyant. But we keep taking out money. Yesterday, $450 million, pounds, excuse my language. But, but we've not paid yet. We've not paid yet. I was even No, going to... you are going to pay because they actually had to call the president to get his approval for it. Because without it, the court would not have agreed to give them a stay. So we are committed to pay. You are committed, committed and you have to pay. We are committed. 59 days that <laughs> you, was, you was, have to pay. So it's not something you're going to say uh, later, I'm not going to pay. I, I, want to, I want to up out. You can up out. You have to pay. The whole world is watching us. And the way we handle this matter is going to determine people, whether investors will want to come to Nigeria. Do you know how many hospitals they will have built? $450 million. Do you know how many hospitals? $450 and million. Pounds. Pounds. Do you know how many hospitals they will have, have built and, and homes and... Fixed the education sector. Fix. Definitely. It's a sinkhole. Until really, until we are ready, we'll keep falling this, into these kind of traps. But I hope and I pray that every Nigerian right now, we are all disgusted about what is going on. But the time has come. We need to begin to speak up. Somehow we, are all, we have all been cowed into a position where we've lost our voices. And so a lot of things are happening in this country and we just think it's okay. It's not okay anymore. Because ultimately, what are we going to leave for our children? What legacy? I don't want to be among those people that tomorrow my child is going to say, oh, my, my, my parents, no. And that is why I, I took out my time, despite the fact that I'm not feeling so good to say, I will be here this morning to, to, thank, you know, to you so add much. my voice to what is going on. You know, on. when the news broke yesterday, yeah, we called her up. She, she was down with malaria, but you took out time to be in here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, it was my uh, pleasure. Uh, it's it was it's my more pleasure. than a pleasure talking to you as always.